Okay, welcome from the future. <laughs> um, this is the second uh, quiz under, I believe, magnetic forces and fields. I want to say it's practice quiz 5-4 that we're doing today. So this one's on the velocity selector. So um, I've gone ahead and pre-written in some important equations. We'll reference them and kind of explain them as we go through. But uh, for starters, let's just read off the problem. So a proton is injected initially in the plus x direction between two horizontal parallel plates containing equal but opposite charges as shown. All right, so we got our two plates top and bottom with some uh, proton initially moving to the right. The proton is observed to curve downward in the minus y direction. The magnitude, oh, that's this direction, nice. The magnitude of the electric field between the plates is E equals 6,000 newtons per coulomb. The speed of the proton is three times 10 to the fourth meters per second. At this moment, there is no source magnetic field, only that due to the moving proton. So they're not throwing any magnetic field into the, uh, into the mix here. Okay. Part A just asked me to sketch the electric field lines in the gap between the plates on the figure. So a few things to note about drawing in field lines. One is when I draw in field lines, I wanna be sure that I'm drawing in arrows to indicate a direction of the field line. So by convention, field lines flow from positive charges from high voltages to uh, negative charges or low voltages. Recall that um, positive charges act as sources of field lines and negative charges act as like sinks of field lines. So positive charges produce those field lines, electric field lines, and uh, negative charges kind of like absorb them. <clears throat> Speaking a little, that's a little wishy-washy there, but uh, positive charges produce them. Negative charges are where the field lines end. That's probably a better way to say it. Okay, so draw those arrows. Another thing to note is that anytime we've got field lines, field lines that are more dense, i.e. like more field lines next to one another, if I've got dense field lines, that corresponds to a strong field. Dense means strong, essentially. And when they're less dense, that means less strong. So like if I, this is not a completed diagram here, but if I consider the electric field lines between two charges, one positive, one negative, I've got a, a lot of electric field in this region. It's strong in that region. And I've only got a weak electric field up in this region because there's fewer lines, essentially, fewer electric field lines. Any quick questions on that? Is that intuitive enough? Might be backtracking a bit too. Okay, so to, so to move back down to the problem itself, I'm supposed to sketch the electric field lines in the gap between plates on the figure. So our two plates, this top and bottom plate. The hard part of this question in my head, there's two parts to it, I'd say. There's two nuances to it. The first, though, is just figuring out the direction of, the, uh, of those field lines. So the, the trick that I need to think about here is actually the, the sign on the charge. Since it's a proton, I've got a positive charge that's moving to the right initially. Now, as it's moving to the right, these plates, the charge on these plates is causing it to move down. So that tells me that there's a downward electric force on this proton. Is that cool? Can I get, a, can I get some thumbs if that's all right? Uh, open mouths if you're like, what are you talking about? Okay, okay. All right, fair enough. Okay, so, um, so since I've got this downward force on my proton, what that tells me is that the electric field points in that same direction. If I wanna get that from kind of like a, a math perspective, the force points in the direction of the uh, charge times electric field. So if my charge is positive, electric field and the force on that charge point in the same direction. If it were to be negative, so if it were an electron, I would have the opposite direction. So, yeah, so I know that might be kind of like a, I don't know, a tricky concept at first, but the basic idea here is that the electric field and the force always point in the same direction when Q is positive, 
and always point in opposite directions when Q is negative. So let's draw that in. The electric field lines go like this. Okay, so real quick, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with that as I've drawn in those field lines? Anybody got me? Like more dense, it's dense in the center and they should all be like equal since the magnitudes. Right, yeah. thanks. Yeah, good call. Thanks, Ariane. So um, we've got the direction right, but the density is uh, is not uniform. So, because it's two large parallel plates, two uh, two horizontal parallel plates, the electric field should be roughly uniform between them, which means that the density of field lines shouldn't really change. So we would want them to be about equally spaced from one another. And there's my electric field. Okay, so that's A, done. Find the magnitude and direction of the electric force on the proton due to the charged plates, explain. So this is gonna be just a, hello, a direct application of one of our main equations. So let's talk, let's, it's gonna be this one, but let's break down what this equation means. So I have that force is equal to Q, the, the magnitude of a charge, times E, the, uh, what do you call this? The electric field vector at that point. So the basic idea here, number one, when we say force, well, forces need to be applied to something, right? The force is applied to the charge. So if I have a charge that's just floating out in space and there's some electric force on it, that's gonna cause that charge to accelerate. Yeah. What this equation gives us is a way to relate some ambient electric field, like some electric field that the charge lives in, to the force that charge experiences. So this is if this blue thing here is my electric field. So um, this equation essentially lets me translate between the force felt by a charge and the electric field in which that charge is kind of like swimming, uh, the electric field at that point. So, um, yeah, I think of it as the electric, the electric field as just existing around the charge and the force acting on the charge. That's usually, I think that's a, that's a nice clean way to kind of divide them. Okay, I'm gonna erase that for clarity, boom. Okay, so I've got force equals QE, where E is the electric field. So if I want to find the magnitude and direction of the electric force, oh, whoops, well, I've already kind of cheated there. <laughs> but one thing I can tell in terms of the direction is that because the charge is accelerating, uh, can I spell accelerate? Oh my God, how long have I been doing this? I believe it's just one L. <laughs> in the minus Y direction, uh, the electric field Oh wait, and I, I say because the charge is accelerating in the minus y direction, and uh, the um, 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 yeah, no, it's just because the charge is accelerating in the y direction, there must be a downward force minus y on that charge. Okay, let me pause here for a moment, see if there's questions. Looks like the chat's still clear. Um, so like for, because you used the word accelerating like versus moving, how did yeah. you know that it was like accelerating? Like I'm just kind of sure. confused by the word choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is a good question. So um, in the problem statement, it tells me a proton is injected initially in the plus X direction. So what that means is, this word injected is a little weird, but what it means is that initially the, uh, the charge only had a horizontal component to its velocity. You kind of see here it's pointing only to the right. So 
if it were the case that there were nothing interacting with this particle, it would just keep going in that direction, right? It's one of the Newton's laws, it just keeps going. So since its path is curved, since it's got, uh, since it doesn't continue to move only in the y direction, I kind of trace this out down here. Uh, its velocity is now going like this. That tells me that there was some kind of acceleration, right? Because acceleration corresponds to a change in velocity. So yeah, so since I've got an acceleration, that tells me that there must be a force. So to kind of like, I'm gonna dial, dial it all the way out for a second, <laughs> but since F equals MA, anytime I have a force, I've got an acceleration. And since acceleration is, uh, uh, to, I'm getting a little, I don't know if this is notation you're used to seeing, but it's a change, I don't think it is actually. Roughly it's delta V over delta T. So roughly, because it's a change in velocity over time, anytime I have a change in velocity over time, a change in the direction of my particle's motion or, or magnitude of that uh, velocity, that's gonna to correspond to a force. Is that kind of answer? Is that a little, is that still kind of fuzzy? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I just forgot that like the change in direction means it's an acceleration. Yeah, good stuff. Good Thank clarifier. you. Okay, I got another one. Uh, I just had a clarifying point question from part A. So since these, okay, so up to part A. Since these two plates are parallel to one another, the space between field lines are all equal correct. So yes, there's a little nuance here. Um, so this is not nuance that you'd be generally tested on, let's put it that way. But there's a little nuance here in that um, it's only really properly true that they're all equally spaced for infinite, infinite size plates. But like for like human sized objects, it's pretty close. Or like, like you know, like little uh, capacitors in your computer, it's all pretty close. So like toward the center of a parallel plate, this is basically true. It basically is perfectly uniform. Out at the edges, it kind of does this little flex thing like this. But we wouldn't ask you to draw that. Um, that's like kind of a, that's kind of like a next level thing. But since the plates are parallel, yes, yeah, since the plates are parallel and not like at an angle, <laughs> like this say, uh, and because they're relatively large plates, the, uh, the, the field line spacing is all equal, which is to say that the electric field is roughly uniform inside there. It's roughly a uh, constant electric field as I move from left to right. Thanks for the clarifier, Carl. Uh, more questions on that? I have another question, which is, how do I know it is accelerating in the y direction? It looks like it's accelerating in the x direction. Okay, good. So as drawn, it's not impossible that it's accelerating in the x direction. So um, one way that I know for sure that it is accelerating in the y direction is because if I look here at this, this y-axis, this one here, if I look at this y-axis here, I can see that it initially has no velocity in that direction, right? My velocity vector is pointing only to the right in the x direction. So because it begins to move down in this direction, like to the right, but also down. So I'm gonna highlight in red here. It acquires a vertical component to its velocity, Vy. That tells me that there's an acceleration in that direction for sure. Um, it's not impossible that it's accelerating in the, uh, in the X direction, but the plates can't really cause that um, because no component of the force, like the electric force, is going to point in the uh, vertical direction or the horizontal direction. So again, to kind of draw in those field lines one more time, the field lines point only vertically. So they can't contribute to a force in the horizontal or x direction here. They can only contribute to the y direction. But as far as how I know that it's accelerating in the minus y direction, I can tell that because initially it starts with a velocity that's pointing only to the right. So if it were to just continue like that, it would just go straight. But because I don't see that velocity stay the same, i.e. I see the velocity start to curve down, uh, that tells me that there must be a force in that vertical or y direction. Does that help, Carmen? Is that still a little weird? Still a little weird? Okay, nice, good stuff. 
Yeah, and some of this is probably just distinguishing between velocity and acceleration. So velocity is like how quickly it's moving in some direction, and acceleration is the, the rate of change in that motion. So how much it deviates from its like original velocity. Okay, good questions. Thanks everybody. So now I'm to find the magnitude and direction of the electric force on the proton. So um, I've got this equation, F equals QE, and I've found a direction, which is that it's gotta be downward. The charge is accelerating in the minus y direction, so there's gotta be a force in that direction. Um, another way to think about that, so this is kind of like, it's a, it's a little bit circular because I use that knowledge to determine the, like, the direction of the electric field lines, um, but it's equivalent, I mean, either way, is that because the field lines are pointing downward, the, uh, and, the, and we have a positive charge, right? Positive charge, electric field lines pointing downward, that means that the force is also gonna point downward. So in this case, you sort of had to know the other direction, which is that acceleration, or acceleration is caused by force. But uh, if you only knew the, the force and needed to know the electric field, you could trace it back this way too. Okay, um, let's go ahead and find that magnitude and direction. And because I'm looking so much over this screen, I'm gonna go over here. Hopefully that makes it a little less odd. I'm not avoiding eye contact, looking off to the left the whole time. Okay, so find the magnitude and direction of the electric force on the proton due to the charge plate. Here we go, we've got the direction. Let's find the magnitude. So the magnitude of the force is just the magnitude of Q times E, which is the same as Q times the magnitude of E. What's Q? Well, Q is the charge of a proton. So that's gonna be the fundamental charge which is, I think it's 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. Is that right? Coulombs times the electric field, which is 6,000 newtons per coulomb. Let me double check myself on that. I'm, gonna, I'm about to be looking like a doofus. Of charge. Yeah, we're good. All right, feels good, man. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's go ahead and calculate that. That is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 times 6,000 is 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons pointed downward. Whoa. Okay, I've got a couple more questions coming in. Um, can I say the proton is attracted to the negative plate? Yes, that's, that's right. So if I were to draw on the charges on this upper plate, because positive charges act as sources and negative charges act as sinks, I know that on average, there are more positive charges on the top plate than on the bottom plate. Or not on average, just there are more. There are more positive charges on the top plate. Um, and the electric field lines are down. Yep, that's right. The electric field lines are down, or I would say in the minus y direction, just to be precise here. Another question, are we expected to memorize the fundamental unit charge? No, no worries. Uh, we'll have it, we'll have it on, the, on the final sheet. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th is the fundamental unit of charge. So if I have an electron, just a little particle, an electron, um, it has exactly 1.602, well, almost exactly, times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs of charge. A coulomb is just a much bigger unit of charge. Uh, that's more like human scale, so to speak. Is all good? Make sense? Is the same for a proton and an electron? That's right. Yeah, it's one of the beautiful symmetries of the universe. <laughs> so electrons, electrons and protons both have the same size charge, just opposite directions. Yeah, which you wouldn't necessarily like see why that needs to be just from first principles, right? It's just kind of like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> the, yin, the yin and yang of, uh, of uh, charge. Okay. Thanks for the questions, everybody. Any more? Do uh, 
make uh, for the magnitude of force, like in our final answer, will we put a negative sign to indicate that direction? So magnitude is always positive. Okay. Um, so if I were to say like, what is this force? I could, so if I, okay, so this is kind of like tangential, tangential to the question in the sense that this is answering a slightly different question, which is like, what is the force as a vector? But I could say two things. I could say the force is 9.6 times yada yada in the minus y direction. Or I could say the force is 9.6 yada 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 in the or sorry, negative 9.6 in the plus y direction or just y direction. So I could say either of those if I wanted to answer the, the question, what is the force including magnitude and direction? Here, we just kind of answer it separately. What is the direction? What is the magnitude? But the magnitude will always be positive. There's no need to like throw a negative sign in here if we're asking for the magnitude. Thanks for your question. Okay, let me get a let me get a mood check. Uh, let's get can I get thumbs up if you're like go faster, and let me get a uh, open mouth if you're like this is good. And uh, what else do we have? I don't know. Give me something else if you're like slow down. Anything else? Okay. All right. Wow. Surprisingly even. Let's go. All right. I'm down. Um. Okay, so that means I go very slightly faster. A proton is supposed to travel through a small circular hole in the vertical plate S shown. Let's look at that again. So the deal is they want the proton to travel in a straight line to just go straight through this hole here. The hole is aligned with the x-axis. Nice. A magnetic field perpendicular to the electric field is added to accomplish this feat. What is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the proton? Explain. So I think this is one of the greater jumps in intuition, um, one of the greater jumps in intuition on the problem. So what I'm gonna do is let's take, I wanna take, uh, let's take 45 seconds. 45 seconds, think this one through. Tell me what you think. So what is the magnitude and direction on the magnetic force on the proton in order for the uh, proton to move in a straight line over here. So we're not turning off the electric field or anything like that. We're just moving in a straight line by adding in a magnetic force. So I'll give myself a little count to 20 in my head. And then I'll tell you the answer, no worries. Okay, so why was it, or what direction was it rather? So as is right now, without including any magnetic field, without including any magnetic field, I have this electric force pointing down. And that's the thing that's causing my path to curve. That's the thing that's causing my velocity to change. So in order to have no change in my velocity. In other words, in order to have my velocity continue on, or my, in order for my particle to continue on in a straight line, I need for a magnetic force to perfectly balance that, that electric force, perfectly balance the electric force. Once I've got that, now my net force is zero, the particle won't accelerate. It will just keep continuing with the same velocity forever. Uh, chat coming in, magnetic force must be same magnitude in opposite direction, right? Yep, that's right, perfect. Same, the same magnitude in the opposite direction. So I don't actually have to do any serious calculation here. It just has to be the same size as the electric force, but opposite, or in opposite direction. So it's gonna be 9.6 times 10, whoops, times 10 to the negative 16th Newtons in the plus y direction. And again, the reason for that is so that the two forces, the electric force and the magnetic force, sum to zero. Uh, in other words, so that we don't have any acceleration for our particle. So it follows this dotted black line in, or instead of this kind of like dashed black line. My upper black line instead of my dashed black line. 
All right. Uh, I'm also to indicate on the figure the direction of the magnetic field between the plates. Explain. Okay, so this actually launches me into uh, an, uh, an overview of the right-hand rules. I know the right-hand rules tend to throw a lot of students for a loop. So what I want to do right now is kind of like <laughs> try to do a little hands-on demo that hopefully y'all can follow along with uh, for the two right-hand rules. Okay, so this is going to be diverging slightly from the quiz, but just as a, just as another another way to talk about it. Okay, so um, right hand rule number one refers to like a, uh, refers to a, let me stop sharing the screen for a second here so that you can kind of see me. Okay. All right, so right hand rule one has to do with uh, charges traveling through a wire. So like charges traveling up through a wire and what happens to the magnetic field surrounding that wire. So moving charges are the things which produce magnetic fields. And uh, they're also the things which feel magnetic fields. So there's gonna be charge movement in order to feel or produce magnetic fields. So imagine for a second that I've got like a wire that is running uh, through this circle here, right? And say that it's carrying current in the upward direction. So this, uh, this little like stylus that I'm holding is my wire and it's carrying current upward. If I take my thumb and align it with the stylus, then curl my fingers around this circle, this circle tells me uh, what the, like the shape, if you like, the, the direction of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field curls around this way, the direction that my fingers are pointing. So again, I take my thumb, stick it on top of my pencil, and then curl this way. The pencil here indicates the direction of current flow. Um, so if you've got a pencil on hand, I definitely recommend doing this yourself. See how it looks for a couple of different geometries. It makes kind of like a cylinder around that wire. So wire, stick my thumb on it, curl my right hand. Make sure you're following the right hand rule. Left hand rule doesn't work. <laughs> so make sure you're using your right hand to stick your thumb on there. Um, questions about right-hand rule one. Uh, I was confused how to do the right-hand rule for when the current is pointing into the page. Sure. So I'll share a screen for this. Hopefully it'll be a little bit visual. So let me share. Okay, so right-hand rule, and I think I need to de-spotlight myself to make sure that I don't take up, there we go. All right, so right-hand rule, when the current is pointing into the page, RHR1 into the page. So if my current is pointing into the page, that's marked with an X, X marks a spot. Here's my current, I. What I want you to imagine is taking your thumb and pointing it also into the page. So if I take my thumb, I'm gonna do it kind of from your perspective here. So my thumb is pointing into the page. In that case, if you look at my camera now, in that case, the uh, magnetic field points this way, right? Curls around this way. So what I want you to do right now is take your thumb. You can see my shared screen. Just stick it, stick it right on top of the, uh, of the X there. And what I'll do is I'll draw, I'll draw the magnetic field. There's the B field for this wire pointing into the page. Yeah, for some reason I keep getting counterclockwise. Are you using, so just to double check, you sure, are you using your right hand? Yeah. Hmm, that's odd. Um, let's see. So when you stick your thumb in, be sure that you're kind of making the thumbs up already. So your thumb should be pointing straight up. And then when you, when you, uh, when you point, make sure that the tip of your thumb is right on top of the X. So the, your thumb kind of acts as like the central point of this like cylinder. Does that help or is that still a little weird? Yeah, still a little weird. Hmm, okay. So let me try to, I'll do a little schematic drawing here too of a thumb. So I've got my thumb. Boom, there's my thumb. Now my palm is closer to me than that, right? So 
my fingers of my right hand are going to curl. Oh my God, I can't draw. <laughs> my fingers of my right hand curl like this. So here's my, there we go. There's my palm, kind of. And there's my fingers curling off. So when I stick my thumb into this X and rotate my fingers around using my wrist, my fingernails point uh, clockwise. Um, meanwhile, if I do like out of the page, so if I do out of the page, now what I do is I stick the like bottom of my, uh, of my fist right on top of that circle. Stick that on, on top of the circle, curl my fingers. Well, my nails point in the counterclockwise direction. So I stick my, stick my right uh, bottom of my palm down, my thumb up, my hand's gonna curl in this direction. Here's my fingernails. Gross, trim those things. Okay, and that tells me the magnetic field points counterclockwise when the current is flowing out of the page. Is that one a little bit more intuitive or uh, similarly still tricky? Yeah, that makes a little bit more sense. Okay. They are just opposites of one another. So if one of them makes sense, it can be good to kind of like latch onto one that you know really well and then just find the other one because it's really the opposite. Yeah. Okay, so this is right hand rule one. Um, 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 can I get some reactions on right hand rule one? Thumbs up if you're like, okay, makes a lot more sense now. Open mouth if you're like, eh, doesn't really make that much sense. And something else if you're like, ah. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Seeing mostly thumbs. Thanks. Okay. Uh, right hand rule two. Right hand rule two. Here we go. So right hand rule two refers to the forces on a moving charge. So right hand rule two refers to forces on a moving charge. Um, here's the general setup. I've got a charge. Q, it's moving with a velocity V. There is also an ambient magnetic field, which uh, for now, I'll tell you what I'll do is I will just point the magnetic field in this direction. There's an ambient magnetic field the charge lives in. So here's B, the magnetic field. What I'm interested in is knowing the force, the force F on the charge. So um, right hand rule two, Let's me determine knowing two of these three things, velocity, magnetic field, and uh, force on the charge. If I know two of those three, I can find the third. So here's right hand rule two. Um, you've got, so we'll start, let's start with the basics. First, you get your thumb. This is the hitchhiker's thumb. Hitchhiker's thumb corresponds to velocity. It gets you places. So velocity, V. The second finger is your, your ray gun, right? So, so your pointer is associated with the magnetic field. Pew, magnetic field. Um, the last one is the forceful finger, right? You get mad on the highway, you know what you're doing. So uh, your middle finger is for force. So this is the right-hand rule number two. All of my fingers, <clears throat> any two of my fingers are at 90 degrees from one another. So I stick up my thumb, that's at 90 degrees relative to magnetic field B or some component of the magnetic field B. The force is perpendicular to the magnetic field and B. Um, if you need to, you can shift this angle between your thumb and your finger and your first finger. Uh, velocity and magnetic field don't have to be perpendicular. However, velocity is always perpendicular to both. That's why the middle finger is like at such a, such a big angle compared to the other two. So um, velocity has to be, or sorry, oof, what did I say? So I think I, I think I misspoke. Force, the middle finger has to be perpendicular to either of the other two. So force is always perpendicular to magnetic field. Force is also always perpendicular to velocity. So um, yeah, so in this case, 
since I've got a magnetic field that's in the plane of the page and a velocity that's in the plane of a page, my force is going to point either into the page or out of the page. And hopefully it's clear kind of why that is. If these two are in the same plane, if velocity and um, magnetic field are in the same plane, it's kind of like I'm looking directly at my thumb and pointer finger. So my middle finger has to either be pointing toward me or pointing away from me, one of those two. In this case, um, what I need to do is I line up my V with the, with the velocity vector. So I'll do that hopefully for you, your view here. And then I line up my B with the uh, magnetic field vector. So that shows me that my force must indeed point toward me. Force must indeed point toward me here. So force is coming this way, out of the page. Okay, questions on right-hand rule two? Or like, do that again, please. I don't know what you just did. <laughs> Either are fine, all are welcomed. Got a bunch of chats coming in. Picasso, thank you, thank you. How do you apply right-hand rule in this question to figure out F and B? Good stuff. Uh, I'll hit that in just a moment. Can we find the force using right-hand rule one? Kind of. So there, there are modified versions of right-hand rule one involving this curling of the fingers that I, use, that I usually use, honestly, but um, different versions are intuitive for different people. So, so I'll say here's an alternative uh, way to find force using right-hand rule one. You can use right-hand rule one to find force or something similar to right-hand rule one to find force. If you line up your velocity with your pointer fingers like this, then curl toward the B field. So curl toward, hang on, let's do it this way. I line up my velocity vector with my fingers this way, up and to the right in this case. Then I curl the shortest direction toward the magnetic field to where the magnetic field has arrows. In this case, that's kind of like up and to the left, or uh, what do you call this, counterclockwise. Now, once I've done that, if I've put my hand in a position where it can curl from the velocity to the uh, magnetic field, if I stick out my thumb, that tells me the direction of the force. That's another way to use a right-hand rule, one-like rule um, to, to find the force. Does that answer your question, Carmen? Is that okay? Okay, cool. All right, so I know that was kind of a long, um, a long diatribe away from the problem itself, but important concepts. And I feel like a lot of times it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really sink in that well during the first time you see it in DL. So hopefully that helps a little bit with the right-hand rules one and two. Now let's return to the problem. They want me to indicate in the figure the direction of the mag magnetic field between the plates and to explain. So um, here's the deal. In order for my, let me, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase the electric stuff so that I have a little bit more room. In order for me to have a magnetic force pointing upward, which is like a key from, uh, you know, the previous part of the problem. It's one thing we really need from the previous part of the problem. I need for the magnetic field to point in some direction, which is perpendicular to that force, perpendicular to that force. So in order to have a, a force uh, in the vertical direction, I'm going to need for the magnetic field to point in like the x direction or the z direction. It can't point in the y direction at all. I also have a velocity vector pointing to the right. So if I want to maximize the amount of force that I have going in the upward direction here, I'm going to need for a magnetic field to point either into the page or out of the page. So I'm going to need for magnetic field to either point into the page or for magnetic field to point out of the page. All right. So what I need to do now in order to figure out which one it is, i.e. is the magnetic field pointing into the page or out of the page, what I need to do is line up my fingers using right-hand rule two. So as a reminder, V, the velocity vector, 
goes along with my thumb. It's my hitchhiker's thumb. Magnetic field B goes with my pointer. Well, I don't know that yet, so I can't, I can't use it. But I know that force points up. Okay, I'm gonna have to contort my hands here. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up for a sec. So the velocity vector, again, is pointing to the right. My force is pointing up. So that means that my pointer finger is pointing this way, as in into the page. And I'll go ahead and draw that too, because I know it's not that easy to see on the camera. So my, did I say velocity vector is pointing into the page? I meant my magnetic field is pointing into the page. So what we'll end up with is magnetic field B pointing into the page. So let me draw that again using, like using my uh, Picasso-like art skills. So velocity is gonna be my, here's my right thumb. It's pointing this way. There's my, there's my thumb. <laughs> I made a big grody nail on there. Okay, I've also got my middle finger pointing up. There's my nail again. So here's my, here's my remaining fingers. Nice. Here's kind of my palm. That means that my pointer finger must be pointing like this, way out into the page. So it's supposed to be behind the rest. I'll try to draw some, some reduction in the side. Some, what is this called? When your finger looks smaller because it's farther away. So my finger is all the way back, like way pointing this direction in the, uh, in the minus Z direction. Okay, so magnetic field is pointing into the page. If you want to see that again, like with a real, you know, hand, here's my, here's my three fingers. In order to rotate so that all of my fingers are aligned with the, uh, the right things, in this case, velocity to the right magnetic, er, and magnetic force up, I need to rotate like this. So my magnetic force is up, my thumb is pointing to the right, and here's my pointer pointing into the page. Okay, we got a couple more questions coming in on chat. Uh, couldn't the magnetic field point out and we'd still have perpendicular angles? Yes, that's true. So if we had the magnetic field pointing out of the page, if we had the magnetic field pointing out of the page, what would happen then is that the magnetic force would have to be pointing down or the velocity would have to switch directions. So um, this is where the right-hand rule is important. If you use the left-hand rule, you would find that the uh, magnetic field is pointing out of the page. <laughs> so the right-hand rule helps us distinguish between these two options, into the page and out of the page. Does that make some sense? So like to kind of show you, here's what not to do. If I, here's, I'll show you. So uh, if I use my left hand, I've got my velocity vector pointing to the right, your right. I've got my magnetic force pointing up, which means that my magnetic field is pointing, uh, I guess I'd be out of the page, um, which is against convention essentially. So right-hand rule is a convention that we set that lets us all agree on which direction the magnetic field is pointing. Or yeah, yeah, that's basically, that's basically it. Uh, buh, buh, buh. What would happen if F and B were in the same direction? I know in the DL, F equals zero when B and B are in the same direction. Okay, good. So um, yeah, this is good. So if F and B are in the same direction, basically that, okay. So basically that would mean that they were both zero. <laughs> uh, so force is always perpendicular to magnetic field. So they're, they, they always have to be perpendicular to one another. V and B, um, velocity and magnetic field don't but the force is always perpendicular to both velocity and magnetic field. Um, and that's, it's for reasons which are a little bit complicated, uh, but like it's, it is true in general. I mean, it's, it's, that's a generally true statement. Force and magnetic field are always 90 degrees, or magnetic force and magnetic field are always 90 degrees and uh, velocity and magnetic force are always 90 degrees. I'm trying to think of there's a good, easy, clean way to explain this. Here's one quick way to explain it, is that um, forces produced by magnetic fields can't point in the same direction as, uh, well, no, maybe I don't want to say that. 
Okay, I'll try again. Forces produced by magnetic fields can't point in the same direction as velocity because they can't cause increases or decreases in velocity. They're not allowed to, we, we say magnetic forces do no work. They can't increase or decrease velocity. Uh, a static magnetic field can't. Um, so magnetic forces are always perpendicular to velocity for that reason. As far as why the magnetic force is perpendicular to magnetic field, my instinct is honestly just that it's like a, it's, it's convenient mathematically. Like we sort of define the magnetic field um, so that it makes, you know, there's a, there's a nice clean way to find the force from it. <laughs> magnetic field is a construct in a sense, right? You kind of just make it up to, uh, to make calculations like this make sense. Um, hopefully that helps a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's made up in the sense that they are, yeah, th these are human constructs to describe nature. For sure. But this is a particularly mathematically elegant way to talk about how magnets affect charges, which that's legit, that's observable. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think that's it for chat questions. I'm gonna go ahead and move down. Here we go. Thanks for your patience, everybody. And thanks also for the great questions. So indicate in the figure the direction of the magnetic fields between the plates, explain. So, I would say something like, by right hand rule two, the charge must have, the charge must, I'll just say by magnetic field, by right hand rule two, because the velocity points to the right, uh, the charge is positive and the What's the last thing? Ah, yes, the magnetic force points up. Um, 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 B points into the page. Did I say that right? Hang on, double check. Hang on, <laughs> no, no, I'm double, second guessing myself again. V, B, yep, into the page, good. Okay, um, one last thing that I should say about right-hand rule two is that if you have a negative charge, if you have a negative charge, right-hand right -hand rule two, uh, whatever quantity you determine using right-hand rule two with a negative charge, you just flip at the end. So I'll just put a little star. If Q is negative, flip whatever vector you found at the end. Yeah. So if you're trying to figure out like velocity or magnetic field, you would flip it if Q is negative? So exactly. So whatever you find at the end, so say that you have B and F, so you have magnetic field and force and you're trying to find velocity of a charge. Um, if Q is negative, you would just apply the, rec the, the right hand rule negative regularly. And then at the end, when you found velocity using right hand rule, flip that velocity. Also, what would it look like on the diagram, like the out the thing going into the page? Sure. So, um, or like not this diagram, but like the one that one. No yeah. Like, yeah. like you're asking, like how would I draw in magnetic field going into the page? Yeah. So the way I would draw it, if I wanted to be fairly like precise, is I would draw in some nice, like evenly spaced X's with circles around them. So the X's with circles around them, as a reminder, uh, X with a circle around it means into the page. The way I think about it is, I think about it in terms of arrows. So if I shoot an arrow, if I'm the person shooting an arrow, what I see is the arrow goes away from me, i.e. into the page, is the tail of the arrow. If an arrow is coming toward me, I see the head of the arrow first. So out of the page, so this is into the page. So if it was like, uh, going towards the right, you would just draw lines going towards the right, right? That's right, yeah. So if I had a magnetic field that was going to the right, I would just draw in field lines like this and I'd mark them. Okay, the thank you. Yep, sure thing. Thanks for the questions. More questions coming in. Uh, what do you mean flip the velocity? For example, velocity is supposed to go to the right, but you flip it, it goes to the left. How to know magnetic force pulling up? Okay, cool. 
So we've got a couple of questions coming in. Um, the first one I want to address, Miles, Miles says, I thought only F is flipped with a negative charge. So if you know V and B and you have a negative charge, then you would flip force at the end. However, so consider for a moment that I had something like this. I, have, I know that the force is pointing upward and the magnetic field, or not upward, the force is pointing out of the page and magnetic field is pointing up and to the left. Well, this tells me that the particle's velocity has to be at least partially pointing up and to the right if it's a positive charge. However, if it were to be a negative charge, that velocity has to be at least partially down and to the left. Yeah. So regardless of what I'm finding using right hand rule two, um, I need to I need to flip it at the end. I need to flip that that target vector at the end, whatever my target vector is, whether my target vector is magnetic field or velocity or force. If I have a negative charge, I flip it. Uh, what do you mean flip the velocity? For example, velocity is supposed to go to the right, but you flip it, it goes to the left. Yes, that's right. So if I had a negative charge, if I had a negative charge, then my, uh, then my velocity is flipped relative to what I would observe it to be from uh, a positive charge. So I think, I think this needs like maybe a little bit of context is still not communicated super well here. This is only when I have two of the three things governed by right-hand rule two, and I'm looking for the last one. So this is in the context of right-hand rule only that I'm like flipping around the direction of one of these vectors for a negative charge. Um, another question, how do I know the magnetic force is pointing up? Ah, okay. So the magnetic force must be pointing up here from an earlier part of the problem. So the electric force is pointing down from these two charged plates. And what I want is for the um, is for the magnetic force to cancel out the electric force. That lets the particle continue to move in a straight line through this hole over here. Yeah, so that's why the magnetic force points up, is to counteract the electric force. There's another question. I thought magnetic field lines were always circles. That's correct. So if I'm drawing in these magnetic field lines, I uh, somewhere else, somewhere else, these things are feeding back on themselves. So uh, this is only showing part of a, of a field line. We're not seeing the whole thing. So like as kind of a, a little baby example here, if I have, here we go, something like this. If I have a uh, just a regular old bar magnet, if I zoom in to look only at this region right here, kind of to the right of the bar magnet, then it looks kind of like it's just, you know, a straight line magnetic field. So even though on the grand scale, all magnetic field lines must have heads and tails, they must, they must all end in circles. I shouldn't say all have heads and tails. On the grand scale, they all have to kind of like form a, a ring like this, a circle. Um, if you zoom in on a spot, it looks kind of like a straight line. So you can have like, uniform-looking magnetic fields. Hopefully that helps. So like somewhere out here, there's like a magnet, presumably, generating this field inside here. But we don't worry about that magnet. <laughs> OK, last part. Uh, we've just about hit time, so I'll make this one quick. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field between the plates? So this one requires one last equation. I believe this, this is Coulomb's law, if I remember right. Or is it Lorentz force? Lorentz force. Oh my God, I'm getting too old, you guys. I'm forgetting the names of my physics concepts. All right, it's this guy. <laughs> FQ equals QVB sine theta. So the force on a charge Q in the presence of an ambient electric field, the magnitude of that force is given by the size of the charge times the velocity of the charge times the magnitude of the magnetic field times the sine of the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. So to draw this as kind of like a physical picture, I've got some ambient magnetic field, B. Um, I've got a charge Q, which is living in this magnetic field. 
and it's moving with some velocity v. All right. Now, the, uh, the theta, the angle, is the shortest angle between v and b, the shortest angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. So there's my theta. This tells me the force. And again, the direction of that force is determined by right-hand rule uh, two, which in this case is this way out of the page. Okay, so if I wanna find that magnitude, if I wanna find that magnitude, um, all I have to do is calculate QVB sine theta. Q is again gonna be the fundamental charge. The velocity is given to us in the problem as three times 10 to the fourth meters per second. Okay, B, the magnetic field strength is the thing we're interested in. And then sine of theta, well, now I have to think about this. So the magnetic field is perpendicular to the electric field. V points straight to the right and B points straight into or out of the page. So the magnetic field points straight into or out of the page, in this case, uh, into the page. So the angle between velocity and magnetic field is just 90 degrees. 90 degrees, they're perpendicular. All right, so, uh, and oh, sorry, one last thing. The force on the charge is gonna be the same as the force from uh, the previous part. So 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16, as we determined in part C. Okay, now we can just calculate. So the magnetic field strength B is 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16th divided by E, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th uh, coulombs, times three times 10 to the fourth, times sine of 90, which is just one. And when I calculate that out, what do I get? 9.6 times 10 to the negative 16th over 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, times three times 10 to the fourth for velocity. I get 0 0.2, feels kind of convenient. So magnetic field is 0 0.2, uh, and what are the units on that? Tesla, Gauss? I believe it's Tesla. Um, yeah, cool. A couple of questions coming in. Do we assume we can draw them as straight unless told otherwise? I'd say this is the kind of thing that's like context dependent. Um, if you're looking at a uniform magnetic field, so like if you're looking at something where there's just a magnetic field in some space that charges are moving through, typically they're gonna be straight lines. If it's a, if it's a situation where I'm like, draw the field lines between um, a, uh, you know, between two charges, well, these aren't gonna be straight all over the place. They're gonna be curved in some spots. So it's, it's context dependent. Okay, can you explain the 90 degrees again? Yeah, sure. So um, let's do it like this. The magnetic field is gonna be pointing in the, uh, the, the, so to, okay, let's frame this. The velocity is pointing in the plus X direction. So V is pointing this way. The magnetic field is pointing out of the, or into the page, which is like the minus Z direction. That's this way. So, the, uh, the angle, here's B, here's V. The angle between these two axes, the minus Z direction and the X direction is just 90 degrees. Okay, hopefully that helps. Uh, let me get back over here for a minute, let you take another look at it. Oh, is the, magnet, oh, yeah, is the magnetic field in units of T? Uh, should be units of Tesla, I think. Gauss okay. is smaller, right? So, um, yeah. So if we put it in fundamental units, it'll be it'll be newtons per coulomb meter per second. Okay. So newtons second per coulomb meter, <laughs> which I believe is a Tesla. Yeah. Yep. And if not, I'll put it in the errata in the YouTube notes, but. 
It should be Tesla. Cool. All right. So I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. Thanks for coming out, everybody. And uh, good luck. <laughs>